Alright, hey, this is Russell Ian, and we've got something a little different today than Armored Brigade. This is Command, Modern Operations. I've been playing this game since about 2013, I think when it came out originally, but it's changed a lot, and I kind of stopped for a while, and now I'm getting back into it. And this is one of my favorite scenarios. It's Operation Brass Drum. Uh, I think this scenario was originally made probably in 2013, 2014, so it's supposed to happen in the future of 2017, but obviously that's long past. So let's look at the scenario description here. It's August 4th, 2017 in the Strait of Hormuz. The playable side is the United States, so we're going to be the United States Navy with some Marine and a little bit of Air Force um, assets, but mostly it's uh, the U.S. Navy. Its duration is 24 hours, one day. So it says, following the July 2017 attack on Gaza, the Islamic Republic of Iran demanded a U.N. censure of Israel as the unprovoked aggressor in that crisis. Although the measure was enthusiastically supported by several member nations, the proposal was swiftly quashed by the U.S. U.N. ambassador with the Security Council veto. Frustrated on the international stage, the Iranian president declared a blockade on the Strait of Hormuz until such time as the United States allowed the world to speak. While only a few years before such an action would be would have been foolhardy, it would be unwise to discount Iran's ability to make good on its threat today. In recent years, the American's international prestige has suffered. In particular, progressively worsening relations with Russia have led to state burst intolerance between the two nations. Also, China, ha China has also been at odds with the U.S. over their expansionism in East Asia and trade inequities. Both have worked to increase their influence with Iran, in particular by providing them with a new generation of defensive armaments. Despite the protests of a weakened United States, the American president is not deterred from standing against the Iranian ultimatum. With only one carrier and one amphibious ready group in the region, with little else to support them, he orders a freedom of navigation operation through the Strait of Hormones, the Straits of Hormones, and authorizes preemptive action to guarantee its success. It's a bold move that will demand most from the limited forces available to the U.S. Navy where success will bolster the flagging prestige of the United States and failure means massive loss of its influence in the Middle East. All right, so that's the scenario description. And let's look at the scenario briefing. I forgot where it is. Okay, so here we go. The situation, the Iranian military is enforcing a blockade of the Strait of Hormones. A handful of tankers transit transiting the Strait of the Strait have been attacked by air-launched anti-shipping missiles, mines, and torpedoes. Large commercial traffic has all but ceased the small ha, has all but ceased, though small coastal vessels are still out in number. Our Mideast friends are shying away from confronting Iran in this instance. Recent Iranian expansion and ballistic missile capabilities have them concerned. While we, while we retain some overflight rights, basing in countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and even Turkey is not forthcoming. So our enemy forces, Iran. They are being the recipient of Russian and Chinese assistance over the past few years has improved the Iranian military capabilities significantly. In particular, its incorporation of older but modern Russian SAMs, such as the SA-10 and SA-20. The Iranian IADS is of great concern. Shorter range systems like SA-11, SA-13, and SA-15 augment the network along with older HY-2 and SA-6 batteries. Low-level defense include various man pads and AAA guns at key locations. The SAM umbrella protects air bases now housing squadrons of MiG-29 and J-7 fighters at Bandar Abbas and Chabahar a newly operational unit of Chinese-made J-10 fighters and the remaining handful of old U.S. F-14As now fly out of the base at Shiraz. Smaller auxiliary fields such as JASC and Bander Length host older legacy MiG-29s. Strike capability is primarily the job of F-4E Phantoms at Bandar Abbas and Su-24s out of Shiraz. Both are capable of launching anti-shipping missiles. 
Naval assets include several Kilo-class conventional submarines, which have been recently augmented with the second batch of improved hulls to complement those received in the 1990s. The Chinese-made Hubui-class missile boats have recently joined the Iranian fleet with, with other older Chinese-supplied PCMs. The Navy also operates several batteries of land-based mobile anti-ship missile batteries, which are thought to be covering the strait itself. A particular concern is the deployment of naval mines in the strait itself. Intelligence indicates the approaches to Bandar Abbas are heavily mined, while mines in the strait transit lane appear to be less concentrated. So on the surface, you can see they have um, P313-1 Fath. It's a Dondor type 021 Handong. Uh, the Torga, it's a bug hammer mod, and the Type 022 Horobit. So these are all frigates and missile boats. And in the air, they have some tankers made from Boeing 707s, uh, F-14s, F-4Es, some IL-38. Those are uh, maritime reconnaissance aircraft, some J-10s, some j 7 Two H fish bed. Those are Big Twenty One copies. Some so Helix helicopters. Some Big Twenty Nine Fulcrums. P three Orions and Su Fencer Su Twenty Four Fencers. And they have a Kilo class submarine and all of these Sams and AAA. And let's look at this friendly forces. Due to other current operations, it will be at least four to eight hours before additional forces can be expected to arrive. This is the combat operational debut of the F-35B. Well, not really, but it would be very unfortunate to lose any of these aircraft to hostile action, but their capabilities should prove useful. T-LAMs are available, though a number of those on board the ship have been sequestered for later use. So on the surface, we have the Bush um, Carrier Strike Group. It's got, so we have the CVN George Bush, the Nimitz class. We have uh, the San, Juan, San Joaquito, which is a tight Condoroga based Line 3 virtual launch system. Uh, a Higgins, or the the Higgins, which is a Mahan class, or ugh. it's an Arleigh Burke Flight 3 of the Mahan subclass of the Arleigh Burke Flight class. It, it, it gets complicated with all these ships. Another guided missile destroyer of the RE. Arleigh Burke Flight 2A and uh, a supply ship. And we have the America Amphibious Ready Group. We have the LHA 6 America, a couple LSDs or an LSD and LPD and a DDG. And then, in actually, in the Gulf, we have, I think, uh, well, closest to here to the um, it's around Oman in the Gulf of Oman we've got the Zumwalt the DDG 1000 Zumwalt uh, surface action group with a Farragut and two LCS which if you know anything about the Navy that's kind of funny and for the air we've got the complement on, on the bush some of it is available, some of it is unavailable because of maintenance. And we've got helicopters for anti-submarine warfare. And we've got here a bunch of attack helicopters. Probably won't be using them. Submarines uh, will be in the Ospreys in case we need to rescue downed pilots. We have six F-35 Lightning IIs some more cargo helicopters more helicopters and some fire scout uavs and then at Diego garcia way down south we've got i think six kc 135r tankers um three p8 poseidons those are the replacements for the p3 orion and we have four global hawk um uavs one is already airborne and we're going to have another one at the Djibouti, we've got three KC-130J Hercules. Those are tankers, um, marine tankers. And then we have one submarine, the SSN-775 
Texas. It's a Virginia Flight 1. Okay, our mission. Break the Iranian blockade of the Strait of Hormones. Our execution. Zumwalt Service Action Group is to transit the Straits of Hormones and arrive in the designated objective within 24 hours. The American Amphibious Radio Group and, and it says Ford, but it's Bush Carrier, Carrier Battle Group are to assist by rapidly attriting Iranian military capabilities in the Gulf of Oman and Strait of Hormones areas. In particular, neutralizing airfields, naval units, land-based anti-ship missile batteries, and other high-order threats. Striking the Southern Region Air Defense Headquarters northwest of Jask, striking naval operations headquarters near Bandar Abbas. Reduce the Iranian IADS in the region. That's their air defense system, uh, integrated air defense system. In particular, SA-20s, SA-10s, and long-range electronic warfare radar sites. So they've, they've got some mobile jammers that, that are going to jam our radars. And we need to clear naval mines sufficient to allow form and basis of reestablishing safe navigation in the Strait of Hormones. Oh, so we've we've got 24 hours to do a lot of stuff. We're probably not going to get it all done. And then logistics, the political consequences of US pilots falling into the hands of the Iranian military would be far reaching and detrimental to the su success of the overall operation. Therefore, retrieval of down pilots is a high priority. All right. So I have gone ahead and I have set up a few missions already so we don't have to sit through this. We've got a Hawkeye track. Let's look at our missions here. We've got a, a bar cap, which is gonna be basically a flight of two Super Hornets uh, flying north of the carrier battle group to kind of stop any fighters from coming through. And we've got a Hawkeye track, which is, they're the airborne early warning for the Bush group. We got North Anchor, and Anchor is a, is a tanker track, where, where tanker flights. So this is where the KC-130Js uh, are gonna be flying to provide tanker support for the carrier because we no longer have KA-6s anymore. And we have a South Anchor, which is going to be KC-135s, which are gonna be providing carry um, tanker support for the Poseidons if we decide to use them. All right. So we've got in the air already, we've got a Global Hawk. It's going to be flying here doing some passive picking up signals so we can kind of find out where the enemy is. This is our submarine, the Texas, which is a Virginia class. This is the Zumwalt Surface Action Group. This is the, the Bush Carrier Strike Group. And this is the American Amphibious Ready Group. So what I'm going to be doing, my, my main plan is I need to find the SAMs and I need to strike them. And I'm going to actually launch a strike against uh, Char Bahar. Uh, from bu the bush first um, and also a massive TLAM Tomahawk land attack missile strike towards Char Bahar and Jask and the air defense headquarters and Bender Abbas now honestly I think a lot of those missiles are gonna get shot down but the, the main point of that is I want to provoke an Iranian response because I think our Zumwalt group with Sea Dragon missiles is going to be able to shoot down a lot of their aircraft. So I think we're going to use our air defense missiles to do a lot of damage to their air force and attrit it before we even need to try to get into the Persian Gulf. That's, that's my overall goal. And if, you, if you've watched my Armored Brigade videos, you know I like to play one-to-one, -one, but it's impossible to do with this game because the scenario is 24 hours long. So we'll be going to different speeds depending on what is going on. So, and you'll see I like to do a, a mixture of auto attacks and to also plan out strikes as well against particular buildings depending on what the attack is going to be on. So let's get started. Let's get our 
Let's go ahead and let's put this on fire speed. Let's go down to one. So, as we can see, our bar cap, Dude 51 flight, it's two F8, F-18Fs, they're jammed. They're being jammed probably by some sort of mobile jamming device. Here we have vehicle, mobile jammer. Let me move this over here. So it has a pretty pretty long range if it's able to jam those radars there. And we have it looks like a we can pick up from its signals. It has its radar on, so we know it's it's a P3 Orion flying here. And we've got our Hawkeyes airborne here. And I have it having its radar on. None of our ships have their radar on because we don't really want to give away our position. That's that's how you find naval ships a lot of the times. As we can see, we're just picking up their signals. These are merchant ships because we know the type of radar that they have. So this is our first Global Hawk. It's got a track here. It's going to fly along the 12 mile outside and just kind of pick up some signals, find out where everybody is. And that's going to give us a good idea. And as you can see, we're picking up a lot of stuff. It's kind of hard to see the words. But there's a jammer here. There's a radar here for their SAMs. Another radar here. There's a tin shield. And so we know that's a radar for SA-10, the 10 shield is, so we have the SA-10 here, another mobile jammer, and here is the airfield itself. This is going to be our, our, our first major target. And we've got Texas. It's going to transit all the way into the Persian Gulf. All right, and here's our Zumwalt action group. Going through here. And I think we can go down south to Diego Garcia. And this is South Anchor. We see our KC-135, or KC-135 here. They're flying out to the South Anchor, and we've got the another Global Hawk is going, and here's our KC-130 heading out to be the refueling support for our aircraft carrier. All right, I kind of don't like our our guys here being jammed, our F-18s. And we have it, so there's always going to be two um, of these fighters here. So let's pick up the speed again. Let's go five. Let's let things get set up here. Maybe even go 15. I, it's been a while since I played this scenario, and I don't think I've ever actually completed it, but it's it's pretty fun, and I'm pretty sure that the Iranians aren't going to strike us first. So, as you can see, we're not getting constant data of everything because they're jumping around. All right, bar cap is going the other way. We're picking up a. Uh, a may see how many seconds ago it is where we're picking up the signal from and the global hawk is what's picking up the signal is what this line means all right 
So what else do we have in the air? We have some J-10s in the air. Still a May and a P-3. Bogies, okay, these are Tomcats. So it looks like they're just on a combat air patrol. So Big Red 4 is, is our Global Hawk. And he's really picking up the signals here from Charbahar. The jammer, the radars. So we're 34 minutes into the scenario. So got plenty of time. And this could be commercial traffic. It could be, we, we don't know, there's there's lots of commercial aircraft in the air, there's lots of commercial shipping, so we don't want to, we, we need to make sure we know who we're shooting down. We, we don't need a USS Vincent's operation. Somehow we're getting, so ship here. Alright, let's go down to one speed to try to figure this out. So, we figured out these are two of these missile boats here. These PCFGs, fast guided missile patrol craft. So, 14 seconds ago, we, we found our signal in this location. And they got another mobile jammer here, and this, okay. So we got, oh, we've got a goblin right here. That is a submarine that we don't know about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Texas. It's going to move to intercept this submarine. This could be one of the kilos. It's moving at one knot. Or it could be biologics. I don't know, so. Not sure, but if this is if, if this is the kilo. Mm, but moving at one knot. It's, that's it's a little suspect. It, it could be whales or fish or something. So what I'm going to do is launch an ASW helicopter and send it out. See if we can figure it out while we have Texas on an intercept course. Actually, they're only moving at one knot, so let's Texas here a little bit. And we're going at 20 knots. What's their depth? We don't have a depth. We've got a helicopter in the air. So let's plot a course to the goblin. And he is going to use his dipping sonar. faster so we'll be able to determine what this guy is and if he's the kilo I don't want to attack him quite yet I'm 
but we shall see. Okay, and it is biologics. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I'm gonna let them keep their patrol, but so now Texas, sorry, go back to where you were. Eh, we can turn off our dipping sonar. I think they're just gonna RTB. So, some sort of fish or whales or something. All right. So they've got a lot of cap up. F-14s. Let's Oh, so they are orcas, we've determined. They are killer whales. All right. So good thing we didn't attack them. But we got Texas off her mission for a bit. So let's move up the fire here a little bit more. Okay. So we have F-14s, it looks like they're coming to intercept our Global Hawk. So we're gonna move our Global Hawk's course down a little south. All right. But I'm pretty sure they're almost in the range of our Sea Dragon missiles from Zumwalt. Oh crap. But we're at 60,000 feet. There's no way they can attack us. All right. Lots of traffic out there. Okay. So, we're getting aircraft getting pretty close to the Zumwalt action group. They're only F-14s though, so they can't attack us. But you know what I'm gonna do? Yes, boom. Turned on our radars. So now they know where we are but it also is going to intimidate them to make them want to not, maybe not get so close. This Global Hawk. Back along here. Actually, you know what? Let's get the Global Hawk actually into the straight. See what we can pick up. All 
right. So I think now, hmm, local time, it's 3 o'clock or 15.15. 15. I we'll kind of want to wait till dark. But maybe not. Let's see what they do to our global hawk. Let me go through the straight. So these are definitely enemy ships or Iranian ships. Not quite enemies yet. Because we haven't initiated hostilities. So we got the May there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna plan out an attack mission here. That wrong thing missions add new mission strike land strike active let's call it let char bahar strike okay so all right we got here. Yeah. Oh no, they've destroyed our global hawk. So they're they're asking for it now. Two sections, four aircraft for typical attack, cruise formation, okay, blah, blah, blah. So target list is going to be this radar. The SAM site. Charbahar. No need to attack all of these hardened aircraft shelters and open parking spots. Definitely the ammo. All right. All right, go. So now we're going to unleash our TLAM attack from our Zumwalt group.
we'll type Banderabbas. No. Here we have a pre. No, that's a. I'm okay with that. Okay, let's see this hit first. You can see these numbers. So we got one missile going there. And also, what I'm hoping to do is have them expend a lot of their SAMs. Alright. Here's these guys now. They're gonna go in at minimum altitude. six also. Minimum altitude. One hundred feet above ground level. Okay. I don't like that. They left their bar cap to attack this May. That's not cool. It's not what was supposed to happen. And the Sams didn't. So these are all tomahawks. I think these are also tomahawks. So Sam is shooting at the tomahawks. exactly sure what they're shooting at. Lost the tomahawk there. Got like fighters in the air. Fish beds. Ah, these are going after this jam. shoot down a lot of these fish beds hopefully cuz our guys on the attack and it looks like they're coming to intercept Okay. 
even know where this missile is going to. These tomahawks. Some pretty good kills here. At this They're pulling off. They've dropped their. These are the GBUs. GBU's heading in. So, our first airstrike seems to be a bit of a success. T lambs, not nuts. Not so much, but I kind of expected that. Now what I'm hoping is that provoked a strike package to come at the Zumwalt that we can shoot down a lot of their aircraft and it attrit a lot of them before we have to fight them in the air or drop bombs on them. So, we still didn't destroy their air defense headquarters. Uh, we're gonna have to do that with bombs, I think. But we're gonna have to take out a lot of their air force first. All right. So we didn't lose any aircraft. Let's go ahead and kind of not really cheat, but look at our losses and expenditures. So we've lost a Global Hawk. We fired 13 AMRAMs, one Sidewinder, eight Paveway 3s, eight GB, GBU-32s, 72 uh, Tomahawk Ebes and eight Tomahawk 109 Block Fours and 20 Rims 17. But look at this, we've destroyed. Oh, wow, <laughs> we destroyed one hardened aircraft shelter, one ammo shelter, one abgas tank, one building, uh, the airport terminal, <laughs> one May. 16 fish beds, 5 fulcrums. They've shot a lot though. But I kind of had hoped our strike on Char Bahar would have been a bit a bit more successful. Let's see if we even have any All right. So here, now oh, these are fish beds. I'm waiting for the Su-24 and F-4 strikes. 
will be coming from there. Man, we really wasted a lot of those tomahawks. I think we should have attrited their air defense before we fired those because <laughs> we didn't get many hits. I expected a few to get through. I don't I don't think very many got through. I thought I thought for sure we would destroy this radar. We did find some triple A. All right. Let's speed up time a bit. So I'm interested what's going to happen with this T lamb. <laughs> RGM 184A NSM block one. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our air defense. Munitions. More kills. Oh, see, this is a generic Doppler radar, so this is going to shoot down a commercial flight. I think coming to get us. Yep, fencers. All right. This is what I was waiting for. The aircraft are a big part of what we need to shoot down. It's a pretty big package. If if they if they get through, we're kind of screwed. Solve of war there. This is a very big part of the battle right now. And Iranians are flying over Saudi Arabia. Missiles coming in. I think we're out of SAMs. So that's not good. But we got Phalanx guns. One vampire. A, va a vampire is an incoming enemy missile. Oh, he's searching. It's searching. So, we're good. Whew. 
Well, we were able to fend off that first strike by them. And let's check and see what we're able to kill. 15 Su-24s. That's, that, that's a big hit to them. Six J-10s. That, that, that's a pretty hard hit on the Iranian Air Force, actually. So... Plus all those weapons that they had aboard that either missed or were destroyed. That's that's pretty that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, let's go down to one time. Alright. Uh, these are the airborne guys, and they're not jammed because we destroyed those jammers. That was good. It's commercial flights, we... A Cessna. A Cessna Citation. Alright. The May, Fish Bed, Tomcat. It looks like we've shut down air operations at Char Bahar. That's good. We destroyed a lot of their Su-24s. Like 15 of them. I don't know exactly how many they had, but that's a pretty good chunk. Um, and I think six, six J-10s? And I think they only had 10 to begin with. Yeah, six J-10s, 20 fish beds, five fulcrums. So we, we, we've done We've done a number on their Air Force already. So what, with that, we're going to end it with this episode. And we will continue in the next episode to see how we deal with their Navy and the mines and the rest of our high-value targets. All right. So this is Russell Ian. Out.